accidents at sea, the Arctic Sea was one. One of the reasons why the Germans had to use the Arctic Sea was because they'd run short of submarines because their small fleet of covert submarines, which has been doing drug running and kiddie, kiddie trafficking, um, has been pranged and intercepted. But we actually have, unbeknownst to the public, interceptions at sea of Russian, by the Russian Navy of German subs. Now, occasionally I get questions. I, I think there was uh, somebody rang me last year and said, Michael, what did I know about four dead Germans in a boat and four bales of cocaine that had washed up off the coast of Norway. And the Norwegians wanted to know if the Royal Navy had been involved and some of the Norwegian intelligence thought I might know the answer. And I said, well, nothing to do with us. Uh, uh, the Royal Navy aren't allowed to go sinking U-boats at the moment, nor are the Americans. At the moment, if we want a U-boat sunk, we have to ask the Russians to do it. The Israelis are out, we're out, the Russians are out. So, uh, sorry, we're out, the Americans are out, the Israelis are out. Um, if, if there's a U-boat we need taking down, we get the Russians to do it. And they've actually popped a couple for us, which have been very, very kind of them. I think it'll be something like that. It'll be a child kitty kidnap gone wrong. It'll be a, a drug bust that goes hopelessly wrong. Um, it'll be uh, 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 another German, it'll be a shooting down of an airliner where the truth suddenly gets out. They got very close to getting out. Uh, the last airliner brought down by a missile was the Air France, well, the Yemeni Airbus. The Air France Airbus is brought down by a modified AIM-54 Phoenix fired from an Iranian sub on the surface. The French then mounted an anti-submarine effort, attacked the Iranian sub, and we had diesel oil fuel, a big slick on the surface, which the Brazilians let us know about. The media said, oh, that's the fuel from the aircraft. But of course, if you, uh, you know, aviation fuel doesn't make a slick like that. That was diesel fuel. That was from the Iranian sub. The Iranian sub was either injured or got rid of the fuel for buoyancy reasons in order to dive, crash dive. Um, the, the, this is an Iranian sub on a drugs run, and there are major, major stability and buoyancy problems because they've got 50 tons of cocaine typically. They're, that's at the front of the sub, and emergency crash dives when you've got that big heavy load up front are not easy, and sometimes you have to lose your diesel fuel. Uh, the, the Iranian sub runs back to Iran and is based at one point, refuels, we think, having lost a lot of fuel, refuels at a covert Iranian submarine base involved, which, because the Iranians do a lot of trafficking and they, they, they leave the stuff by sub. There's a covert Iranian base at the north tip of the Comoros Islands. Um, the French knew about this base. The French tracked the Iranian sub into the Comoros Islands. They lost her. They eventually picked her up. They sent down a nuclear submarine. You remember, there was all sorts of activity in the South Atlantic. Everybody was following what was going on. The Australians sent over a Collins-class submarine. You wouldn't believe what was happening. Uh, and I bump into the Australian, you know, I bump into Australian generals and admirals from time to time. Uh, the Aussies, I think, sent off a Collins-class Collins class sub. The US Navy were really interested in what was going on. Uh, the French arranged for a Yemeni Airbus to do a camera flyby of this sub base, and the F Iranians shot down the Yemeni Airbus, and the Comoros Islanders had to lie about it and pretend it had crashed near the airfield when it took them 12, week, 12 hours to find it. Uh, you know, their story was, oh, the airliner crashed in the sea just off the airport. You know, the airport's by the sea and the airliner crashed in the bay. They, they didn't know where it was for 12 hours. Uh, something like that, it's very easy to trigger a war. At, and at some point, the media are going to ask questions. The media were completely dumb and silly over the Air France thing, and they, they, the media will buy just about any nonsense you give them. But at some point, one of these crazy operations is going to blow up into a hot war. It, you can't keep kidnapping kiddies, smuggling drugs, bringing down airliners in international airspace, mass murder, Lockerbie. I mean, Lockerbie could have started a war if the truth had come out. Uh, you can't keep covering up the truth. At some point, the truth is going to become yet into the end. And that, I suspect, will be the trigger. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Shrimpton. I'm quite willing to believe all sorts of things, and I have a great interest in military matters, intelligence matters. I've taken a great interest in this all my life. I come mm -hmm. from Firing Furnace where we make the nuclear submarines yep. and try to help to build them. Make a very good job. Very good job of them too. We do indeed. In fact, they're better than the banana bill that the Newcastle one may have built, but that's what we're doing. I have to say that I've heard the most astonishing catalog of suggestions, allegations, mm -hmm. all the rest of it about the uh, about this subject which you say, of which I have very little knowledge. Mm -hmm. I'm willing to have knowledge straight away. Oh, dear. Um, and here you are telling me that we're going to be in a shooting war within sort of five, mm -hmm. 12 years. Uh, and that this has been a continuous process of the German intelligence activities since, well, since 1900 onwards, you say. Now, 
There are two flaws to this which I find very difficult to understand. One of them is, uh, which you hinted at at the beginning, which was the world banking system and the fact that the Germans wanted to control this. Now, I find it astonishing that you tell me on the one hand that the German intelligence is controlling China, Al-Qaeda, uh, various um, Arab interests and so on, and yet the whole of the world banking system is to a very great extent controlled by American and Jewish interests who are not going to like that. So that's my first question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, just one question at a time. Um, well, and well, please well, don't make a it's, speech. It's the same question. Yeah. I'm not trying to make a speech, believe me. I'm just finding it extremely difficult to come to terms with what Mr. Trimble is telling me. Good, good. Um, and the other, the other thing is that, and this is really the question, that in the face of all this, mm -hmm. uh, which is quite amazing, mm -hmm. there's no doubt about it, you say it's true, why is it then, and this is the question, that the American and the British and the Israeli intelligence agencies are so impotent and oh. stupid and useless <laughs> in dealing with it? Right, two well, questions. For practically a century. Yep, yep, two, two, well, two, well, two, well, two, well, two, well, two, well, yeah. two, 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 two. Two complete answers to that. The, the theory that international finance is controlled by American or Jewish bankers has been knocking around, particularly on the right wing of politics, for a century or more. There's only one tiny technical flaw with it. It's bollocks. No offense intended. Uh, what you're, when you talk about American bankers like Morgan, for example, you're actually talking about German Americans, ethnic Germans. German American, uh, with German Americans, we find the loyalty to Germany often goes down as far as the fourth generation, sometimes even the fifth. And they see the fatherland as Germany, even though their grandfathers may have been born in the United States. Uh, so uh, uh, one always has to be very, very careful. The same applies to Jewish bankers, who it, it almost invariably, when we, when we find out who these people are, we find that they're probably not strictly Jewish anyway, and secondly, they are German Jews. Now, because the Holocaust was organized out of Germany, the theory is that no Jew would ever work for German intelligence. That is also utter nonsense. If you think about it, if you're a German intelligence officer, who is the best person in the world you could recruit, particularly after the Holocaust? Jewish. Uh, there's been, there have been a number of Jewish assets of German intelligence over the years, uh, and you have to be very, very careful. Uh, 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 the, the world banking community is not controlled by Americans. It's not controlled by Jews. Uh, it is controlled, the, the, if there is a controlling, single controlling power, and of course the banking system is, is, is complex and the, not every bank is run from Germany, but ultimately you can trace the control of most banks back to Frankfurt. If you have, for example, an American bank like Citibank, it may be American in terms, of its, uh, in terms of its base, it may be American in terms of its name, it may speak English, but you've got to look at the shareholding, and sometimes you've got to look at the shareholders controlling the shareholding, and sometimes you've got to go back uh, and go very deep. In the intelligence community, what we do is go deep. We find out who is in ultimate control of, let us say, Citibank, and you will be able to trace that back to, uh, for example, uh, Frankfurt. Uh, I don't think they control the lights, though. <laughs> Mr. Oh, uh, sorry, the second, qu second question. Yeah, I didn't answer your second point. Yeah, second point, the intelligence committee. The problem, that, the problem that Mossad, who are very good, love Mossad, wonderful people, but the problem that Mossad have had, MI5 and MI6, and American intelligence, is German penetration at the top. Uh, MI5 and MI6 were both founded by German spies. Vernon Kell, Mansfield coming, both assets of German intelligence. The Germans have been very, very successful in penetrating our agencies and penetrating at the top. The CIA was founded by a German spy. The first director of the CIA, for example, was a very, very actually quite charming man, Rear Admiral Oskar Hillenkoiter. We see the tea coming in, which is marvellous. Uh, reinforcements have arrived of tea. For those watching the internet, it's a Sunday afternoon, and it's a very informal occasion, and tea is very much part of it. Uh, the, the American CIA was set up, the first director of the CIA, Rear Admiral Oscar Hillencoder was the main Axis asset at Pearl Harbor. He was the executive officer on the USS West Virginia. He was the main source for Japanese naval intelligence of the American naval dispositions at Pearl Harbor. So the CIA have been controlled. The first three directors of the CIA were all German spies. Hillencoiter, you go through Bettelsmith, 